and welcome to Space, here with a special edition from the COP21 Climate Summit in Paris. We're here to try to answer a very important question. What's the future of planet Earth? What's going to happen in the next 100, 500, or even 1,000 years? We have some expert guests on hand to try to answer that question. But first, let's have a look at how space technology has transformed the way we see planet Earth. When the first astronauts ventured to the moon, they couldn't help but look back and marvel at the beauty of our home planet. There it was, a blue dot, Earth. The last few decades saw an explosion in the number of Earth observation satellites blasted into orbit. They could offer science a unique view with detailed, broad, precise and regular measurements. What those satellites saw and continue to see is how our planet works, its atmosphere, its plants and forests, its ice and water. Today we can monitor our weather and learn about our climate with a global view that would be literally impossible without space technology. Here in Europe, that expertise in Earth observation is now being brought together in the Sentinel fleet of satellites. They consolidate the work of previous missions into a steady and reliable flow of data under the umbrella of Europe's Copernicus program. The latest, Sentinel-3, was just completed in the south of France and will be launched into orbit in a few weeks' time. So today we have all the tools we need to see Earth for what it is, a planet, our planet. So what happens now? What happens next with our planet? I'm here on the stand of the European Space Agency with Jean-Noël Tepo, a meteorologist at the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, and Andrew Shepherd, a professor of Earth observation at the University of Leeds in the UK. Gentlemen, welcome. What do we know for sure about what's going to happen to Earth in the future? Um, I think you will find difficult uh, for a scientist to say we are absolutely certain about things. They will say it's likely, it's very likely, it's extremely uh, likely. What we are certain about is what is happening now, what we are seeing, so the temperature has increased. The sea level is increasing as well. The sea ice is uh, resisting. The glaciers are uh, resisting as well. A hundred years from now, are we still going to have a, a North Pole that's white and has polar bears roaming around on it? Based upon what we know today, things will look very different in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. The sea ice has been retreating over the past few decades. We know that for sure. Um, the polar ice sheets of Antarctica and Greenland, they'll look the same from space. They're big white things, but they'll have a lot less ice in them and that ice will end up in the water and so sea levels will rise as a consequence of that and so people will need to adapt to those changes. When it comes to Earth observation, we just saw in the package that there's an awful lot of satellites up there now. The reality is though we've only got 30 years of really good data, we've got about 200 years of observation on the ground. How sure can we be that we're making the right predictions, that we've got the information that we need about our planet? So actually we have a bit more than 30 years of space observations. The weather satellites started, let's say, uh, 60s, mid-60s. And uh, in, if you go past, you, we have less, of course. So we have to replace this by uh, more qualitative observations. And then it comes to uh, geological uh, data records. Um, in the past 10 years, we've had really good measurements of the polar regions, thanks to the European Space Agency's Cryosat mission, which can now look at all of the North Polar Ice Cap and the South Polar Region as well. We used to think that the polar ice sheets would just sit around as slumbering giants that didn't change at all until we looked at them with satellites. Now we see that they, they speed up from time to time. In fact, some places in Greenland are now flowing five or ten times faster than they were 20 years ago. Planet Earth looks really different today than it did at the time of the last binding agreement at, at, at COP in Kyoto in 1997. We're at this climate summit, decisions are being taken by the politicians, but then what happens in the future in terms of monitoring that, in terms of making sure that people are doing what they said they were going to do? There are already discussions at the European Commission level whether we need an additional sentinel or an additional mission to monitor the, um, the carbon emissions and to make sure that what is being promised 
or um, uh, what is being uh, uh, decided during the, the COP is actually uh, happening. Looking further into the future, a, a thousand years off into the future, are there other things that we could imagine might happen that are on the list of possibles? I think that the, 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 the ice sheet model projections for um, 1,000, 10,000 years in the future uh, tell us that there may be no Greenland ice sheet, there may be no polar sea ice in the Arctic. Planet Earth would look completely different if that were the case. And so those, those unlikely but potential scenarios should be considered by people. But, but of course, we don't want to worry people about things that might happen in 10,000 years. If you think about our planet in terms of the solar system, there we are. On one side, we've got Venus, which is a terrible example of climate change gone wrong. On the other side, we've got Mars, which is this kind of freezing desert. Are we just completely living in a mad world, imagining that we can control our planet? Well, we've made a difference over the last uh, century by uh, injecting uh, uh, an enormous amount of carbon uh, in, uh, in the atmosphere. So we, we ought to be also able to, um, to have an impact by reversing this, um, uh, this change. Yeah, I mean, I have faith in technology. Technology has solved lots and lots of amazing things in the 20th century. There's no reason why uh, this can't be solved. Energy needs to come from a different source in the future. I think that's absolutely clear. Um, all the people with vested interest in, in, in this know that, and they're investing resources to try and solve this problem. Great. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for being here with us. Now for a little change of perspective, and we asked ESA astronaut Frank Davina what Earth looks like from space. Hello, my name is Frank Davina, and I've spent six months on board of the International Space Station. This is of course our blue planet. You see here a lot of clouds, a lot of weather systems, and there you see the black, the immense universe. When you look from space, sometimes you see the small islands that are formed by these coral reefs. They are these very crisp, light blue colors that are extremely beautiful to see. You have of course the greens from the, the woods, but then when you fly over deserts, they are brown, reddish, uh, yellow. You see this very, very thin blue line. This is the thickness of our atmosphere. This is what gives us life. This is what makes that this planet here is livable. That's all from the space team here at the COP21 summit in Paris, but you can follow the political developments on Euronews and Euronews.com.